permeates tradition, pageantry, and an unwavering support of the university fans call home. This is Arizona State, and today, alumni are coming home to the place that they call home. This is the homecoming parade, where for each step, there's a reminder of yesterday's past. Whether it's the 87 Rose Bowl, the 96 beatdown of the reigning national champion Cornhuskers, or the sign of a man whose legacy still sets the standard. All things that remind you, no matter where you go in life, there's just something special about coming home. I'm Taylor McGregor, Eddie Schroff, Brock Osweiler in the booth, and guys, a lot of people are coming home this afternoon. Oh, isn't that the truth? You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Sonos Senior Day. Homecoming for Arizona State, a ranked opponent, number 23, Oregon State, making its way into Sun Devil Stadium. Little Pac-12 nooner here in the Mountain Time Zone. And Ishraf, and you know him, Brock Osweiler, the former Arizona State quarterback. Taylor talked about homecoming. Welcome home, my friend. Thank you. It's uh, it's tremendous to be home. I have some very fond memories on homecoming in this stadium, beating up on the Colorado Buffaloes a little bit. It was really cool to be able to bring my daughters down on the field, my wife. Um, it, it's really special to be here, especially considering it's homecoming today. Yeah, and for Oregon State, their head coach, Jonathan Smith, it's not quite homecoming, but there are fond memories of Sun Devil Stadium. Smith was the quarterback in 2000 on the Beavers' greatest team, 11-1. and That season ended in this stadium with a Fiesta Bowl win against Notre Dame. Yeah, what a memory for Jonathan Smith, leading the Oregon State Beavers to their greatest season in school history, capping it off in Sun Devil Stadium against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. And you know what? Jonathan Smith is bringing those winning ways and traditions back to Cor Corvallis. His football team is having a tremendous year, and I really think it starts with their run game offensively. True freshman running back Damian Martinez is having a banner opening campaign campaign up in Corvallis. All things go through him. He's trying for his fifth straight 100-yard game today. If he does that, he'll be the first back to do that Oregon State since Steven Jackson. Now, on the flip side of the ball, when you start talking Oregon State's defense, it all starts with defensive coordinator Trent Bray. What he's putting together, the way he gets his guys to compete, play disciplined, physical football, is truly impressive. And his third down package, I tell you what, for a college quarterback, it's no fun to go against. He's going to have exotic looks for Trenton Borgay today, and Trenton has a big challenge ahead of him. It's a tried and true formula for the Beavers. Stop the run and run the football. For Arizona State, they have an interim head coach in Sean Aguano. We talk about homecoming. This is home. He's from the Valley. He's making a case to be the full-time head coach. He certainly is, and he's making a great case. Go, go back to early October. He knocked off ranked number 21, the Washington Huskies when they came to Sun Devil Stadium. He's known to be a winner around town winning four state championships at Chandler High School. When you talk about the Sun Devils and Sean Aguano, it starts with his running game, and it's X Valade, who's having a tremendous season. Couple yards shy of a thousand on the ground this year. Not only has he had production on the ground, but in the past game, he's a weapon as well. X Valade, the number two rusher in the Pac-12. It's senior day. It's homecoming at Arizona State. And big Brock Osweiler's back in town. About to get started here in Tempe, Arizona. It's the Pac-12 on ESPN. Oregon State won the toss, elected to defer. So Arizona State will receive to begin things this afternoon. Everett Hayes to kick it off for the Beavers. Daniel Ngata waits in his own end zone for the Sun Devils. And Arizona State will bring it out to the 25-yard line. Trenton Borgay gets the start for the Sun Devils at quarterback. He's taken over for Emory Jones, the Florida transfer. What you like about Borgay, a lightning quick release. Super quick re release. In fact, it's the best in the country against the Blitz, getting the ball out in 1.98 seconds on average. The kid processes quick. You can see post-snap. He's anticipating his receivers coming open. He's throwing them open. He has tremendous footwork in the pocket, but he has a tall test today against his Oregon State defense. 
He checks down. That is Geo Sanders for a pickup of about three. Borgay last week took a big hit in the loss to Washington State and had to come out of the game. He's a young man who since taking over has put up at times eye popping numbers. The completion percentage off the charts. His first career start threw for 435 and three TDs. Sun Devils at three and seven on the season. Bowl eligibility out of the window. And that time he finds Elijah Badger on the screen. Oregon State all over it. It brings up third down and five for the Beavers defensively. This is the number one rush defense in the Pac-12. They held Cal to nine yards on the ground last week. Listen, it is not easy to run the football against Oregon State. Over their last five games, they've only surrendered 306 rushing yards to their opponents. But right now, I think this is really the game within the game. It is third down. ASU offense versus Oregon State's defense and all the disguises and difficult looks they present to the quarterback. Another short pass. It's caught by Brian Thompson. It's going to be short of the first down marker, and the punt team will come on. Of note, Brock, for Arizona State, Ben Scott, their starting center is out, so Ben Bray, who backs up at guard and center, is making his first career start at center. The Sun Devils do cross train their interior linemen, but that O-line has been a game of musical chairs all season long. Yeah, a lot of injuries across that front and, and definitely not an easy task for Ben Bray making his first career start against the Oregon State defense. Just like I touched on, they present some of the most difficult third down looks in the country with what Trent Bray is dialing up. Josiah Irish on the return for Oregon State. No Anthony Gold, the punt return ace for the Beavers. He's out today. Both teams have had to go to their quarterback depth this season. Ben Goldbranson, third-year redshirt freshman, making his sixth start. He took over when Chance Nolan went down with a neck injury. Yeah, he's really done a great job of making the most of his opportunity since Chance Nolan went down against Utah. I think the thing that Ben does so well is he protects the football. He gets his team into the right run play, and he understands what the coaching staff is trying to accomplish. Quick out to the outside, that is Tyjon Lindsey. And he gets to the 28-yard line. There is a flag down. There is no foul on the play. The contact was legal. Second down. Now potentially looking at roughing the passer as we say hello to Taylor McGregor. Well, Ben Goldbranson, speaking of homecoming, he's back in the city he was born, about 20 minutes away from here in Mesa, Arizona, is where Ben Goldbranson entered the world. He fell in love with college football right here at Sun Devil Stadium. Both of his parents, Arizona State grads, so he's happy to be back here, but he's also happy to play in front of friends and family who don't get to make the trip to Corvallis very often. So how about this homecoming theme, guys? I love it. Everybody's coming home, and Tyjon Lindsay picks up a first down for Oregon State. So you got a Beavers team which runs it about 60% of the time. They rely on their O-line. They rely on Damian Martinez, who's become the bell cow. And they come out throwing it, which is something they want to do more of with Goldbranson. They certainly do. And Jonathan Smith wasn't trying to hide it this week when we spoke with him. He said, listen, yes, we are running the football at a very high level right now. But if we're going to reach our ultimate goal of where we want to be at the end of this year, we're going to have to start moving the ball through the air as well. And they do it there to the tight end in the flat. It's Jack Velling, a gain of 19 for the freshman from Seattle. Arizona State just getting caught with their eyes in the backfield. Oregon State coming out with play action. People just losing the tight end there. That's one of the things that Arizona State's really battled this year is having good eye discipline on defense and not giving up the gimme passes like you just saw. First run of the game, it's Damian Martinez. And he makes his way inside the Sun Devil 45-yard line. Martinez, a true freshman from Louisville, Texas, only had three Power Five offers, Oregon State, Kansas, and Georgia Tech. He has blossomed into a star. You mentioned in the open four straight 100-yard games. Remember, a true freshman, they've got a back for the next few years in Corvallis. Back to Martinez on the cutback. Big opening. 
And cuts a jagged path to the 29-yard line, a gain of 15 more vision patience you saw it all on display yeah you really did and and I think one of the things that Damian Martinez does so well and he just did it on that last outside zone play is his S cuts meaning once he decides he wants to go vertical he puts his foot in the ground he cuts back against the defense and that's where once again ASU we talk about their eye discipline well let's talk about their gap discipline the safety's blitzing off the edge he needs to squeeze down so he's there to make that tackle Oregon State taking advantage of an undisciplined defense fly sweep Treshawn Harrison flagged down and Harrison brought down at the 21. Holding offense number 81 10 yard penalty from the previous spot repeat first down. Jake Overman with the hold you know and really until that point Oregon State pretty much doing whatever they want on this drive really dictating the tempo of this game to Arizona State hold on the sophomore tight end out of <clears throat> Arizona State has some reinforcements back on defense this week Roe Torrance is back Kyle Soley is back they had a flu bug run through the secondary a week ago. Go Branson over the middle, not much on the pass, and able to complete it. Silas Bolden, you'll see more of him today with Anthony Gold out. Gold has suffered a leg injury during practice this week. And you see why Ben Gobranson, why the team is so high on him right now. He does not put the football in harm's way. You know, sometimes as a quarterback, you know, the old saying is don't crash the Ferrari. And right now, Oregon State, the way they run the football, the way they utilize their tight ends, and the good defense that they're playing, your job as the quarterback is just don't turn the football over and put the team in bad situations. Second and 15, go Branson to the air. Hits his man Bolden on an out route, and that looks to be close to a first down. They're going to spot it right at the 18, and that'll move the chains. Ed Woods in coverage. Go Branson just taking advantage of the free access on the outside there. Arizona State playing soft man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Oregon State getting free access on that 10-yard out. That's something that Go Branson's going to take advantage of all day until Arizona State tightens up the coverage. Three tight ends into the game. Here's Lindsey. Gets the edge. And pushed out of bounds by Kyle Soley, leading tackler in the Pac-12. It's first and goal now for Oregon State. Good-looking opening drive. It hasn't been all Damian Martinez. Go Branson's 5-for-5. Five five. They've used jet motion. Oregon State does a really good job of getting all their skill guys touches, whether that's you know, handing the ball off traditionally from the backfield like you just touched on speed sweeps, bubble screens in the pass game. They do a really, really good job of making sure all their guys get touches. Martinez hit in the backfield, breaks the tackle and bulldozes in for six. Touchdown, Oregon State. And there's the true freshman talent in Martinez. First contacts made five yards before the goal line fights through it keeps his legs driving you can see how difficult it is to bring him down lowering his shoulder finishing the drive in the end zone you can see why Oregon State fans are so excited to have Damian Martinez in Corvallis Everett Hayes on for the point after the kick is good Time out on the field. Three straight games now. The Beavers have scored a touchdown on their opening drive. Tyjon Lindsay setting up first and goal. And then the freshman Damian Martinez in for his sixth rushing score of the season. Fast starts have been a trend for Oregon State. The last five games, they've outscored opponents 42 nothing in the opening quarter. Certainly nothing different to start today. Oregon State really imposing their will, dictating the terms of the game early on, overcoming a holding penalty, which is never easy to do in the middle of a drive. Very impressive start for the Beavers. It's been a bit of a tumultuous season for Arizona State. 
You go back to September. Herm Edwards let go after a home loss to Eastern Michigan. Even before all that, last year, Arizona State confirmed that the NCAA was looking into illegal recruiting practices within the program. That Eastern Michigan loss spelled the end of the Herm Edwards era. Sean Aguano takes over as head coach beginning game four. And then uh, four games ago, Aguano took over play calling duties. And it's changed this offense. The tight ends being used more. They go a little faster. And they use the running back more in the passing game as X Valade picks up eight on his first carry. And uh, there's the big chess match today. Maybe it's checkers because it's brute force, brute force. Arizona State's got a great running back in Valade. Oregon State's got the best run defense in the pack. 12. They go back to Valade, and this time the Beavers win round two. Only a yard. It's third down and one. Kyrie Fisher Morris making the tackle. Valade today needing 14 yards entering play to get to a thousand. He's got more rushing yards than any other player currently playing in college football. Had a great four years up in Laramie with the Wyoming Cowboys. Really picking up right where he left off in Wyoming, transferring down to Arizona State, having a tremendous season. And, and really the most impressive thing with X Valade, it's his all around ability as a football player. He's not only a talented running back, but he's definitely a weapon for the Sun Devils from the backfield in the passing game. Jalen Conyers, the tight end, almost three quarters of his receiving yards have come in the last three games. We talked about that. Getting the tight ends involved, Conyers has had some big games of late. Yeah, and he's certainly an asset that the Sun Devils want to use. You're talking about a guy that used to be a high school quarterback, moved to wide receiver as a high school senior, and then prior to transferring from Oklahoma, was playing some slot receiver for the Sooners. So the guy has a boatload of talent in him, and the more the Sun Devils can get him the football, good things will happen. Valade tackled in space by Fisher Morris. Flag down. Holding. Offense number 53. 10-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Chris Martinez, the left guard. Now, one of the things the Arizona State coaches talked to us about was Oregon State shows you so many exotic looks on defense. And when you have Ben Bray, again, first career start at center, a lot of times identifying that Mike linebacker falls on the center. The Beavers will try to confuse you and disguise that. Oh, certainly. Ben Bray, he's got his work cut out for him today. Making calls against this Oregon State defense is not going to be easy. He's definitely going to need to lean on the guards playing next to him that have played a lot of football this season and are used to hearing those calls and making decisions at the line of scrimmage. Borgay downfield. Good coverage. It's incomplete for Andre Johnson. Rajon Wright was the defender back there for the Beavers. Taylor? Oh, line coach Mike Cavanaugh speaking with him before the game. He said Ben Bray just has to trust the film study. He's smart. He knows how to play the center position. After the experience he got last week, they're really confident in his ability to make those calls that you were mentioning. It's a lot of just trusting it and staying confident in yourself, guys. Mike Cavanaugh, a very well-respected O-line coach in football. Empty set. Borgay to the air. Finds Badger. He's Arizona State's top receiver. He's about a yard or two shy of the original line of scrimmage. Elijah Badger has the largest target share of any Pac-12 wide receiver. So when they throw, uh, there's a good chance it's coming to number two. And I understand why. Elijah Badger, once the football is in his hand, he's as dangerous as anyone in the country at making the first guy miss and finding explosive plays down the field. Let's see what Oregon State dials up on third down. Borgay the snap. He gets lit up, completes the pass. And a first down into Beaver territory, a gain of 15. It's the Vanderbilt transfer, Cam Johnson, where Trenton Borgay has been at his best is against pressure. You can see where Trenton shines, and it is. It's against the blitz right there. Oregon State bringing both linebackers and the weak side cornerback, really bringing a lot of heat against Trenton. Trenton doesn't panic, takes a great drop, keeps his eyes down the field, and delivers the ball for a first down. That's a huge pickup for the Sun Devils. Borgay, six out of seven moves the pocket under pressure eluding the pursuit and his arm was hit as he throws it incomplete second down let's check in with Kevin Connors in the studio Casey 
AT&T countdown to the CFP National Championship game. Acho, Michigan, and Illinois tied when Chase Brown runs for a touchdown. And then Ben Shapen, Kelsey Johnson here for Baylor. Kelsey Johnson, that's his second touchdown, and Baylor just had a huge play. They are going in to score. Baylor in front of TCU, Illinois up on Michigan right now, Anish. A oh, little college football playoff. Jenga could be coming. On the sweep. And there's Valade. Picked up maybe a yard. Right pushed him out of bounds. Valade now three yards away from a thousand for the season. It would be his third thousand yard season of his college career. Ex Valade, just a tremendous running back. His vision, his patience, the way he fights for every single extra yard, just like you saw there. He could have ducked out of bounds. He didn't. He lowered his shoulder, tried to get every inch that he possibly could. Kid runs really hard and has had a tremendous career at Wyoming and now capping it off in Tempe. Seven on the line of scrimmage for Oregon State. Another third down. Edge pressure. Quick throw into the flat. It's complete but well shy of the marker. Validate the reception. Fourth down. Five to go. And let's see what Sean Aguano decides to go. This is no man's land. I'd be surprised if the Sun Devils didn't go for it here. But going back to that last play, that is why Oregon State's defense is so good. Trenton Borgay makes a great decision, gets the ball out quick, gets it to a playmaker in space. But you can see how that Oregon State defense, they take great angles to the ball carrier, and they rally to the tackle. They will go for it. The Sun Devils have converted four of their last five on fourth down. Borgay back to throw, steps up, has room to run. And he scrambles for a first down inside the 30. What a play by Trenton. And, and, and he, don't, don't kid yourself. Trenton's not the guy that's going to beat you in a track meet. But what he did a great job there is he went through his full progression, and he just kind of felt the seize part. And as he was working up in the pocket, he kept his eyes down the field. He remained a passer. And then he realized, hey, it's time to tuck the ball and go get the first down. Great job by Trenton Bourget. 11th play of this Sun Devil drive. High snap. It's a handoff. There's a big hole. And Valade inside the 15. Taylor? Trenton Borgay, a natural leader. Even before he was QB1, he would stand up in front of the group and draw out plays of what the team was looking to do on Saturdays. And then all throughout the year, he has found consistency in inviting guys over to his house on Thursday night, going over the game plan, enjoying some pizza, some wings, and really getting the group together with a common mission. Yeah, they said he is a future coach. Another high snap. Valade looking for running room and lassoed for a short loss. It's James Rawls getting in the backfield first. The unkept secret here at Tempe, Brock, is that as soon as Trenton Borgay's done playing, he's got a graduate assistant job waiting for him with the Sun Devils. <laughs> he certainly does, and, and you can see why, and it reflects in how he plays. You know, currently Trenton is second in the nation at getting the football out. He's getting it out in 2.27 seconds on average, and to me, that is a direct reflection of how his brain works. He's a quick processor, high football IQ, very smart guy, and he's comfortable out there on the field operating the offense. Empty set as Valade goes wide. Four-man pressure underneath. And that ball is caught at the 10-yard line by Johnson. You can... And you talk about the leadership just being natural for him. He's one of six kids, all of which play flag football. So not only is he teaching his teammates, he's been teaching his siblings his whole entire life. And he credits that flag football background with the quick release. It makes sense. I mean, in flag football, you're not worried about getting hit. So you're keeping your eyes down the field. You learn to get the full, uh, football out quick. You get it. You spread, or, spread it around to all your skill guys, and you get everyone involved. We get a timeout on the field. We'll take one, two, 140 to go. Opening quarter, Arizona State in the red zone, facing a third and six. ESPN College Football is presented by Sonos. Experience game-changing sound made easy. Follow Sparky to freedom. 
that's part of the lantern walk at Arizona State. You never took part in that, Brock. <laughs> yeah, I was a little busy at pregame meal at the hotel the night before the game. But I do have some memories running up that mountain. Our strength coach, Ben Hilgar, used to make us run that thing on Friday mornings after Big Squat Friday. I know about that mountain all too well. Around the mountain, Mill Avenue as well. Third down, 11 to go. Ruling on the field, overturned, incomplete pass. I definitely expect to see pressure from Trent Bray's defense here, forcing Trent Borgay into a quick decision. Borgay underneath. He's got Conyers. And his big tight end gets to the 11-yard line. Fourth down. They went for it on fourth down earlier on this drive and converted. But this time, it looks like they'll trot on Carter Brown and the kick team. Sean Aguano not hesitating, sending out his field goal unit. Probably a good decision early in this game. Get points on the board. Get some momentum back. Try to get your fans back into this game. Cut into that Oregon State deficit. Brown, a true freshman, perfect inside 40 this season. And no good. I'm out on the field. Well, that doesn't summarize the Arizona State football season. Chip shot field goal, that's one of those ones you need to get. You need to get your team on the board. Definitely going to want that kick back. Oregon State, 7-0. Kevin Connor, Sam Acho in studio. A couple major storylines going on right now, like Chase Illinois Brown. leading Michigan. Chase Brown, 37-yard touchdown. This is the first touchdown Michigan's given up in the third quarter. The Wolverines just kicked a field goal in each. It's 17-13, 12-30 to go on ABC. A lot of folks in the Big Ten and nationally, even in Knoxville, watching that. Martinez on first down with a nice run all the way out across the 30 getting the push from that big old offensive line a gain of 11 for Damian Martinez and that's where Oregon State can ex basically you know, impose its will. Yeah they can control the game unless Arizona State is able to stop Oregon State's run game which let's not kid ourselves that's what the Beavers want to do unless you can force them into passing situations Oregon State is going to dictate how this entire game plays out and this could be the final play of the first quarter play action well Branson's got all day he'll tuck gets to the outside and he's out of bounds close to the marker about a yard shy a gain of nine for Ben Branson. Oregon State, the defense was on the field for almost seven and a half minutes. Arizona State's drive ending with a missed field goal. Oregon State coming with a little tempo. Don't see this very often out of the Beavers. There's no foul for false start. There's a substitution that didn't get complete. First, second down. Oregon State will walk to the sideline. Quarter one in the books. That's the end of the first quarter. Oregon State scored a rushing touchdown on its opening drive. Arizona State put together a 15-play drive. It ended with a missed field goal. And now the Beavers have it at their own 40. Damian Martinez, four carries, 35 yards, and a score. 23rd-ranked team in the country, up after one. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN. Start of the second quarter at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. Oregon State ball, second down from the Beavers' 41-yard line. Jonathan Smith in his fifth season as Oregon State's head coach. If the Beavers win out, they get to 10 wins. That's only happened twice before in school history. Jam Griffin, the Georgia Tech transfer, bullies his way into Sun Devil territory, a gain of 11. Now, Brock, there's a lot of chatter about what Arizona State will do in terms of its next coaching hire. 
look over on the other sideline. Oregon State didn't go for a splashy national name. They got somebody who was the perfect fit, and it was a bit of a slow build early on, but Jonathan Smith has this program trending upwards. There's going to be a power vacuum in the Pac-12 with USC and USC leaving, uh, USC and UCLA leaving. Oregon State's going to be well positioned. You're exactly right. Oregon State really did find the perfect hire for their head coach back in 2018 because Jonathan Smith understands what Oregon State is. He understands what the town of Corvallis is. He understands the challenges of recruiting kids to Corvallis. Let's be honest, it's not an easy task. And so for Oregon State to have turned around to the point where they're at now, chasing 10 wins, which would be only the third time in school history that that's ever happened, a lot of credit to Jonathan Smith and his coaching staff with how they've gone about things, how they They've taught their players once they've got them on campus and molded them into the players that they want for their system. Back on the ground, back to Martinez. And a first down, and the Beavers doing what they want up front. And you're, and you're seeing right now what Jonathan Smith wants. He wants a physical team that plays disciplined football. He wants to beat teams in the way that a lot of Pac-12 teams don't want to play. This is somewhat of a high-flying conference. Teams like to throw the football down the field where Jonathan Smith is saying, listen, we're going to be a gritty team. We're going to be tough. We're going to be physical. And we're going to win the game in the trenches on our offensive and defensive line. Yeah, they've been doing it so far. They've been doing it for a few weeks now. Isaiah Newell is the running back. Only nine carries this season. Play action. Go Branson on the move. He'll run again, and he slides down for a first down. A pickup of 11 as we check in with Taylor. Well, when we talk about Jonathan Smith, there's no man who would know Coach Smith out the and field what it takes injured. to win at Oregon State better than Dennis Erickson, a head coach at Oregon State and Arizona State. He told me this week he's a beaver. He knows, having been there, what it takes to win. It's a blue-collar program. At Oregon State, you have to really evaluate and get guys who you've been overlooked. He's done that and helped build a really good program. Of course, he spoke about Coach Smith's toughness, reminisced a lot on the Fiesta Bowl, but it is different. Every place is different, and he spoke to how Smith feels perfect for the Oregon State program. And I think perfect is the exact word that you need to use to describe that. You talk about Dennis Erickson. Well, who played quarterback for Dennis Erickson? Jonathan Smith did, put together four great seasons cap things off with the Fiesta Bowl win over Notre Dame, 11 wins, most in school history. So Jonathan saw Dennis's blueprint, and he's bringing it back to Corvallis. There's a couple of injured Sun Devils on the field. Cornerback Roe Torrance, D lineman B.J. Green will step aside. Dr. Pepper Fansville Studio Update takes us to Waco. Baylor up 28-20 on TCU. Amari Dimercato gets in. Big run. You're down by a score, and you need a two-plug conversion. What happens next? Well, you go for two. Max Duggan, this is a little too hot. Uh, too hot, but it still could have been caught. Now you have to rely on your defense. Three timeouts. See how it ends. Two minutes to go, and eight. Go Branson taking a shot. And he wanted Bolden, who's out of bounds. Did make the catch. Unfortunately, did not get a foot in bounds. Six, and it's second down and ten. Good to see Arizona State bring pressure off the edge, trying to start affecting this Oregon State offense. Thus far, Oregon State has dictated the way this game's been played. Arizona State needs to find a way to get the Beavers off schedule and to start creating a little bit of confusion for Ben Gobranson under center try to force a turnover, get some negative plays. Got to juice things up a bit. Out of a heavy set, and there's the Sun Devils in the backfield. A loss of a yard on the play. It's third down, 11 to go. Okay, so to your point now, you've got Oregon State behind the chains. What does Donnie Henderson want to dial up here? Yeah, I think you need to be really smart at defense co coordinator right now. The goal is to hold Oregon State to a field goal, right? You don't want to give up the touchdown. You just had two great stops. So you need to play the sticks here. Drop into coverage, have your defensive backs be able to keep their eyes into the backfield to stop the quarterback run if he wants to try to run the football or hand it off. But play the sticks, rally to the tackle. Out of the shotgun, go Branson. Under pressure. 
fires over the middle, incomplete for Martinez. If that throw hangs in the air a little more, they might have had another touchdown. It's incomplete nonetheless. It's fourth down. And now the field goal team will come on for Oregon State. That goes as an incomplete pass, but this Oregon State coaching staff was telling us one of the areas where Goldbranson has grown up as a starter these last few weeks, red zone, inside the 30. So even if you don't make the positive play, it's not a negative play, and you still have a chance for points. It's the smart play. You saved the field position. Everett Hayes, a 44-yard kick. No good. Timeout on the field. Hayes now just one of six from 40-plus this season. The Sun Devils get a stop. It's still 7-0 early second quarter. Homecoming weekend at Arizona State. Brock Osweiler's calling the game, so we had to go into the vault. Look at the hair. Look at the eye black. Look at the swag. Listen, nobody had to do anything. You guys made a choice to make this one happen. <laughs> I tell you what, man, I, I, had, I had some great times here in Tempe. Met some of my best friends. Met my wife. Oh, how about that throw? Still live here in the Valley. And I tell you what, playing for Dennis Erickson, playing for Noel Mazzoni, Boy, man, I love my teammates, love my coaching staff, and, and uh, I tell you what, I just have the fondest memories here at ASU. And, and to be back today, calling the game from the booth, a little different vantage point than I'm used to, but nevertheless, a lot of fun. Yeah, your first year with ESPN, you've done a marvelous job in the booth this year. you got a bright future as an analyst, as bright as the one you had down on the field, Brock. Thank you. I, I tell you what, man, though, you, you've made my job easy. It's easy when I have to follow you. Now we're just going to continue to embarrass you. <laughs> Single season record holder for most passing yards in a season at Arizona State. Before you, the last true freshman to start. You know all this stuff already. Why am I reading it? <laughs> I tell you what, man. Like I said, I had a lot of great teammates. Aaron Flugrad, Jarrell Robinson, Mike Willie made my job easy outside. Noel Mazzoni dialed up the plays. Loved playing for Dennis Erickson. Still keep in touch with him today. Like I said, just so grateful to be a Sun Devil in my time spent here. And that's Borgay showing the escapability. All right. Fast forward to present day. This week, when you turned on the tape and you watched Trenton Borgay, Gay. I remember you were sending us messages in the group chat. Hey, this kid's the real deal. I like this kid a lot. I like the kid a lot. And watching his film this week was a lot of fun. And really the thing that jumped out to me first is how great his feet are. I wish I had feet like Trenton Borgay when I was in college. His footwork is super quick. His drops are tight and compact. And you can see how quick he processes things mentally because he doesn't hang on reads. He can work through his progression very quickly. And he also knows how to check it down to the running back, which is usually fourth in progression, which I didn't know how to do until probably my second, third year in the National Football League. With Very the play impressive. clock winding down, Borgay chased, completes over the middle. That's Robinson. That's Brian Thompson, excuse me, to the 45-yard line, a pickup of a dozen yards. And yeah, there's the feet again to buy time. Yeah, and it's also the processing. Trenton gets outside. You can see he's working one to two to three and really found his fourth option in progression. There was no panic in Trenton. Kept his eyes down the field, stayed calm. Found an open target for a first down. Big time play by Trenton Bourget. High snap and got him. Hammerheads to the 45 of Oregon State. Taylor? Coaches not surprised at all by Trenton Borgay's success. They said immediately when he started doing scout teams, we knew this guy was special. I asked Borgay about scout team, and he said, look, when you're going against future NFL players such as Jack Jones with the Patriots, Chase Lucas with the Lions, he said, I was trying to give them a good look, but in turn, they're giving me a good look. Those are the guys who helped me stay prepared to ultimately take over as QB1. And he has run with this opportunity and got a Cyclones ahead for a first down. I think the most impressive thing, though, with Trent Bourget, when you talk about his story, it's his patience in staying ready to play. You know, he sat behind Jaden Daniels. And you got to remember, Trent Bourget had one of the most prolific high school careers in the state of Arizona history. The, the kid knew how to throw the football. He knew how to score touchdowns. So he comes to campus. He has to sit. He's sitting continues to sit, finally gets an opportunity when the starter goes down earlier this season against Washington, and he's never looked back. Got uh, he, 
Came to Arizona State as a walk-on. Had to earn everything. And got to once more. You know, and sometimes the most difficult thing as a player is truly staying ready to play when you're not actually getting that playing time. So the fact that Trenton was holding offensive meetings with players at his house and getting up on the chalkboard and talking through plays and working his tail off at practice, I think it really just talks about the kid that he is, the person that he is, and the work ethic that he carries with him. And he was doing that for years, well before he had the opportunity to start. Incomplete intended for the tight end, Messiah Swinson. As we talk about Trent, that's definitely a play that he's going to want back. Oregon State brought the weak side corner, which left a void in the defense. There were some shots downfield there if Trent Borgay wanted to try to take a shot for the end zone. Another third down, and this is where Oregon State and Trent Bray like to get exotic defensively. Yeah, and the difficult thing that Trent does is he'll show pressure and drop guys, or he'll show pressure and bring them. So as a quarterback, you definitely have to see the post-snap pitcher before you throw the ball. Yeah, they dropped one. There's the pressure, and there's the sack. You can see Trent Bray's scheme right there. He creates confusion, not just for the quarterbacks in this league, but for offensive linemen. There's a lot of communication that needs to take place with the offensive line. When you're going to bring linebackers up, you're going to mug them like you see here. A lot of communication, which ultimately sets free Mascarinas Arnold to get the sack. Mascarinas. Four-star recruit, biggest recruit of the Jonathan Smith era. This punt looked to have bounced in the... Now it's going to be a touchback. It looked like it might have bounced just inside the goal line, but it crossed the goal line, and it will be a touchback. The Beavers' defense steps up. 7.30 to go. Low-scoring first half. Statement Saturday continues on ESPN. Number five, Tennessee against South Carolina at 7 Eastern. We get to see Hendon Heisman Hooker and the Vols on the periphery of that playoff picture. TCU, a last second field goal. They beat Baylor. Michigan currently on the ropes against Illinois. The numbers for Hooker last week against Mizzou. And USC, the best hope remaining in the Pac-12. Sitting there at number seven, hoping for a little chaos as Damian Martinez gets out to the 35, a gain of 15 on the play. He continues to run well. Seven minutes and 15 seconds to go in this first half. 7-0 Oregon State. Martinez with a touchdown run on the Beavers' opening drive. For Arizona State, they need to find a way to hit Damian Martinez before he gets 10 yards down the field. Otherwise, Oregon State's just going to continue to dictate how things are going to play out in this football game with their running game. Martinez again. And that's six more. Well, Brock on the touchdown run, they did hit him in the backfield. <laughs> he ran right through it. Yeah, and that's just that's the talent of Damian Martinez, right? He can do it all. Very impressive for a true freshman. And, and it's just not the run game with Damian Martinez. Talking to the coaching staff, talking to his teammates. They say that the kid is incredible when it comes to pass protection. And for a true freshman running back to understand defensive schemes, understand where his eyes need to go to pick up blockers, it's very impressive for a young kid. Another run on this drive. Merlin Robertson making the stop. Jam Griffin the carry. Third down coming up. Merlin Robinson, tremendous career here at Arizona State. Preseason Buckkiss watch list kid. Last season, honorable mention, all Pac-12. The kid does not miss tackles, and he's not afraid to stick his nose in there. Trey Lowe goes wide. Go Branson under pressure and submerged. You brought it up on the last drive. 
and said Arizona State defensively needed to be more aggressive. They dial up pressure. It works on third down. Yeah, you need to find a way to get Oregon State out of rhythm. Now, I get it. It's a double-edged sword. If you're going to bring pressure, you're going to leave holes in your defense. You're going to give an opportunity for the offense to find explosive plays. But the key is to get to the quarterback before he can let the ball go. Go Branson did have receivers downfield, but he did not have time to get the ball off because Arizona State bringing the weak corner blitz and causing that pressure in the backfield. Robertson got the sack, bouncing punt. And Taylor goes down, shy of the 35-yard line. Both teams have missed a field goal, only one touchdown. That came on the Beavers' opening drive. Arizona State's got it back with 4.53 to go in the half. Arizona State did not score in the first half last week. That was against Washington State, looking for their first points of the first half today at home. Senior day, homecoming weekend for the Sun Devils. Oregon State, 23rd in the country at 7-3, looking to get to eight wins for the first time in a decade. Gay sends it downfield for Badger. Incomplete, covered by Wright. I know that's an incomplete pass. Brock, you like the play call, though. I think if you're an Arizona State fan, you do, because you get the sense ASU's almost playing a little too conservative. It's time to go play action, take a shot down the field, just like you tried with Elijah Badger, your go-to receiver, big target, six foot two, 190 pounds. But I think the biggest key, you have to find a way to get the homecoming crowd sparked, juiced up, and back into this game, because right now things are just a little too stagnant and calm. Badger in the backfield, now motions out. There's Badger in space, Valade the block. Badger tunnels his way to the 39-yard line, a gain of six. Third down, Taylor. And with that third down, the message on the sideline has been we need to step it up in these situations. They're just three for seven in today's game on third down. They've been confused by some of the pressures that Oregon State has been showing, and so Coach Aguani went before this last series went to the O-line to try to clean those things up. And Oregon State told us the reason they like to disguise and show pressure and be exotic is so the offense stays vanilla on third down. Certainly. So sometimes your best answer, if you're not having success on third down, avoid it. You're allowed to go first down, second down, first down. You don't have to get to third down every single drive. That time, Borgay finding Cam Johnson. It's a third down conversion, and it extends the drive. Like what the Sun Devils do here. Sean Aguano. Getting the ball out quick for Trent. Trent kind of manipulating the pocket a little bit. Good job of taking advantage of that soft zone coverage on the outside. Boy, Arizona State, great to get that pickup, but just, once again, need to find some juice, find some tempo, find a play downfield, get X loose from the backfield, and create a little bit of energy in this football stadium. Back to the air. A shot downfield for Badger, and it's incomplete. Achille Arnold in coverage. Arnold, the nickel back today. Alex Austin is out. Jaden Grant is out. So Oregon State down two of its starters in the secondary. Yeah, and you definitely need to test them. So taking that shot there, I know the ball was not completed. But from a philosophical standpoint, it's a good thing to do because you need to show Oregon State's defense you're willing to take that shot because then what ultimately you're going to get is you're going to get them playing softer coverages on first and second down, and you could take advantage of those quick throws on the outside. You don't ask her out, you end up in the friend zone, right? <laughs> That's right. You got to try. Valade stays on his feet. And a red zone chance for Arizona State. And that's what X Valade gives you. He gives you big play potential every time he touches the ball. Feed him, feed him. He's had a tremendous career on the outside zone play, just finding the crease. And as soon as he does, sticking his foot in the ground, getting vertical, and finding a big play for the Sun Devils when they really needed it. Six carries, 63 yards for X Valade. 
North of a thousand on the season. Keep an eye on tight end Jalen Connors in the red zone. Definitely a go to target the last couple weeks. Borgay moves the pocket. He'll run and he's chased down from behind. Andrew Chatfield of the Florida transfer got him. A gain of five on the play nonetheless. Second down. Smart play by Trenton. Trying to get the ball to Jalen Conyers, sliding downfield on the little slide route at the tight end position. It was covered in man-to-man -man coverage. Trenton does the next best thing, does not force the football, tucks it down, gets a couple positive yards. In the first game after Sean Aguano took over play calling duties, Conyers had three touchdown catches against Colorado. School record for a tight end. Valaday to the outside. Touchdown, Sun Devils. Valaday getting the Devils in the end zone, and that's what he does. There's just so much patient, patience in his running. The ball's supposed to go inside, but his vision allows him to see, hey, there's space on the outside, cuts it back. He's very decisive with his decisions, doesn't waste any time, doesn't waste steps, gets vertical, gets the Arizona State Sun Devils in the end zone late in this second quarter. The extra point is good by Jace Feely, the son of longtime NFL kicker Jay Feely coming on for the PAT as we check in with Kevin. And Anish coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. We will show you some heart-stopping finishes with major implications across college football. Number three, Michigan with the ball down one, driving right now, plus TCU on a last-second field goal. We'll also get you set for Oregon and Utah with major implications in the Pac-12 as well as that big USC-UCLA battle. Sam Acho here in the studio with me. We will see you at the half. Now the Pac-12 picture starting to take shape. USC in the driver's seat and with just a little bit of chaos, the Trojans can end that Pac-12 playoff drought sitting there at number seven. I think there's a real chance if USC wins out, they can leapfrog Tennessee, who won't have the opportunity to even play in the SEC championship. I certainly agree. I, I, I truly believe that the Trojans control their own destiny. You have to look at the rankings. Michigan and Ohio State playing each other next week. Something's got to give. One of them is going to have one loss. One of them is going to miss out on the Big Ten championship game. You talk Tennessee, you talk TCU. I think for TCU to get in, they're going to have to win out and be undefeated. So if USC can beat UCLA this week, beat Notre Dame next week, who's currently ranked, win the Pac-12 championship against a ranked opponent, that's why I think the Trojans control their own destiny. College football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-A. The wild card for USC potentially is two loss LSU at number six. The Tigers have a spot in the SEC championship game. And were LSU to beat Georgia, both of those teams would probably get in. That's the scenario when things get really sticky. But LSU has to go in and beat Georgia. And right now, Georgia is certainly the number one team in the country. They back it up every week. They play great offense. Stetson Bennett having a great season. Defense is physical. Tough, not an easy task to beat the Bulldogs in the SEC championship game. Go Branson on first down, finds a wide open Velling. And the freshman tight end takes it to the 40 of Arizona State. This was an offense that had to recalibrate after their best playmaker, Luke Musgrave, suffered a season-ending injury in week two. Musgrave, a tight end, a future pro, but they really like the future that's ahead for Velling. Oh, Branson tucks. He's shown some ability with his feet today and picks up about seven. I think that's a good no call by the officials. You can kind of see the Oregon State bench wanting a 15 yard penalty there with the quarterback sliding, but you definitely have to give the defense the illusion that you're going down much sooner to get that flag. Using tempo, and Silas Bolden hauls in a 10 yard catch. Seeing a lot of Trey Lowe in the backfield. He's normally their third down back. He got hurt week one, did not return to game action until last week. He's still not had a carry since week one against Boise State. You can see Oregon State mixing a little bit of tempo this drive. 
clock stops, huddle back up. You can definitely see what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it a 14-point swing. Oregon State gets the ball to start the third quarter, trying to melt this clock, get points, and then get that first possession in the second half. Velling is wide open. Touchdown, Oregon State. Arizona Official State's eyes down. going with Ben Gilbranson's pump fake. Tracking the post over the top. And tight end Jack Velling with the DBs running with the post. He's able to sneak out to the flat, wide open, back-to-back -back times on this drive. Arizona State needs to keep an eye on the tight end position for the Beavers. There is an injured Sun Devil back at the 33-yard line. It's Trevez Moore. He missed most of last year with a knee injury. Going back to the last touchdown. Tight end Jack Velling coming out kind of faking like he's going to block. Get the typical bubble screen. And you see the pump fake by Gobranson. Arizona State taking the cheese. When that happens, you get a wide open tight end for a touchdown. A flag is down after the made PAT. Personal foul for roughing the snapper. Defense number four. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The result of the play is the try was good. The penalty is on Nesta Jade Silvera. So that moves the kickoff lineup. This Tuesday, another reveal of the latest college football top 25 playoff rankings. Reason the guys will break it all down. You'll hear from committee chairman Boo Corrigan, the NC State athletic director. TCU, one close at Baylor today. Michigan in a dogfight with Illinois. That's going down to the wire. USC, UCLA later today. Tennessee at South Carolina. Sandstorm in November. A lot of football still to be played before that playoff pitcher really becomes clear for all of us. It's going to be a lot of fun these next two weeks and then going into the conference championship weekend to see how things shake out. Yeah, that Polaroid has not developed yet. We're still shaking it. Far from it. A lot of fun to talk about it, but there's still going to be a lot of shakeup when you look at that top four in the rankings. Oregon State will kick off from midfield. A minute to go in the half. Both teams have all three timeouts. Musgrave has been out most of the season. Jack Velling, the freshman from Seattle, continues to get better and better. A big part of that last scoring drive. Certainly was doing a tremendous job ste stepping in for the injured Luke Musgrave, having a great second half of the season. And Gold Branson really finding a wide open Jack Velling twice on that drive. Two explosive plays, march him down the field, capping it off with the touchdown throw. Arizona State once again taking the bait on the pump fake and the fake block, which resulted in Jack Velling being wide open. Drive recap brought to you by Oral B. And Gata is the running back. A minute to go. Four gay, 10 out of 16 in this first half. Four man pressure, a strike over the middle. That's the tight end, Conyers. A heavy dose of tight ends from both teams, a gain of 21. That momentarily stops the clock. In a two-minute drive, you need to find one explosive play, have no negative plays, and find a way to have a positive play on your first play. You just checked off two of them on the first play of your drive. Clean pocket to the outside, incomplete for Brian Thompson. Would not have gotten much if he makes that catch. You save time, more important, 41 seconds left. Arizona State here. They have the entire call sheet at their disposal. They have three timeouts left. They can throw it to the middle of the field. Don't forget in college, you get a first down, the clock stops. Plenty of time for Arizona State to find some points on this series. 
And now Oregon State timeout. wants a timeout. Oregon State, their first of the half. This is the 32nd timeout. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and PAT made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Taylor McGregor down on the sideline and Ashraf Brock Osweiler with you on this Saturday afternoon in Tempe, Arizona. Been a nice trip down memory lane for you, Brock. We'll, we'll save the Mill Avenue stories for off air, though. <laughs> You know what? It's been a busy football season. A lot of a lot of travel to the East Coast, covering some great games. A lot of fun to sleep in my own bed last night and be back in Sun Devil Stadium. 41 seconds to go. Second down and 10. Four-man rush. Throw to the outside. That is caught. It's Conyers, and he's brought down by Omar Spates. Arizona State has to burn a timeout. Spates would not let him get out of bounds. That's the Beavers' leading tackler. Heads up play by Omar Spates, junior out of Philadelphia. Really has had a tremendous season. The, the thing that I see with Omar, he doesn't miss tackles. You know, you can see it on tape. He takes great angles to the ball carrier. He's a physical guy, knows how to form tackle wrap up. Really putting together a great season at that inside linebacker position. He is closing in on 300 career tackles, and we were joking with his defensive coordinator, Trent Bray. We said, hey, he's coming up on your number for career tackles at Oregon State. And Bray goes, oh, yeah, I'm aware. If he gets close, <laughs> I'll just sit him. <laughs> yeah, Trent definitely has that power. But that goes back to why Oregon State's doing so well. You know, having Trent Bray, who played at Oregon State, who understands Corvallis now being the defensive coordinator has certainly helped out Jonathan Smith recruiting and doing what they're doing in Corvallis. Third down six, high snap. Borgay pumps, has to get rid of it, and throws it away near the sideline of Arizona no State. We've seen a few high snaps, in the area and remember the Ben Scott, the starting center, out today. Ben Bray making his first career start at center. Yeah, and this is certainly not the defense that you want to make your first career start at center against. And it looks like they might go for it. Maybe this could be a pooch. Fourth down, ball on midfield. 31 seconds to go. Borgay will throw. Got rid of it quickly. And it's caught, but it's short. Conyers did not get there. And Oregon State will take over with 26 seconds to go. They've got the ball near midfield at the 45 and still have two timeouts. So there's a chance now for the Beavers to tack on. Certainly is, but you know what? I give Sean Aguano a lot of credit and respect for going for it there on fourth down. Listen, if you're Arizona State, you're not playing to try to win the conference. You're not playing for bowl eligibility. Your season's done after next week's game against U of A. So for him to go for it, I love it. He's showing his team, hey, we're here to try to win a ball game, and we're going to do everything within our power to do that. And the message yesterday, too, was we want to send our seniors off with a win in their last home game. 26 seconds. Gold Branson from the gun. Steps up and engulfed back at the 40-yard line. Clock continues to run, and it looks like Oregon State may just take this into halftime. You know, and Sean understands that Oregon State's getting the ball to start the third quarter. He's looking at the scoreboard. He's saying, okay, we haven't really stopped Oregon State's run game today. There's a good chance they're going to drive the ball, go score some points. Hey, the the let's half. try to score while we have the ball in our hands. I give him a lot of credit for that fourth down try. And no harm, no foul. Oregon State gets sacked. They run out the clock. Beavers get the ball first to begin the second half. 14-7, 23rd ranked Oregon State on top. To the studio now, and Kevin Connors. ESPN College Football is presented by Sonos. Halftime score in Tempe, Oregon State 14, Arizona State 7. Homecoming weekend for the Sun Devils, senior day for the Sun Devils. And Ishraf, former Arizona State quarterback Brock Osweiler, Taylor McGregor down on the sideline. Only a one-score game, Brock, but it feels like Oregon State has controlled this game. It certainly does. It's only 14-7 right now. 
But if you're an Oregon State fan, you're saying, how are there not more points on the board? We've pretty much done whatever we've wanted to do on offense. We're running the football well over five yards a carry. We're throwing the football better than we have recently. And then on defense, we're creating stops on third down. But once again, when you look back at the scoreboard, it's just a one possession football game right now. Both star running backs have shown up today. Damian Martinez, nine carries, 67 yards. X valid a seven for 74. Eddie Chaplitsky will kick it off for Arizona State. And Silas Bolden will return the third quarter kick for Oregon State. Sky kick, Bolden inside the 10. Spins away and tackled shy of the 20. Moments ago, Taylor McGregor caught up with Oregon State head coach Jonathan Smith. Thank you, Coach. Your quarterback's legs, a huge story in the first half. How important will that be in the second? Yeah, he's done a nice job moving his feet, extending the play, keeping his eyes down the field. And so we're going to need more of it as we uh, move the ball in the second half. What stands out to what your defense has done despite missing some of your biggest playmakers? Well, you know, they've done some things solidly. You know, on the one touchdown drive, we got to tackle better. You know, they ran the ball really well, missed one fit, and then we got to get guys on the ground. Appreciate your time. Anish? To the air on first down, it's Bolden who makes the catch. Makes up for his return with a first down, a gain of 10 on the play. You really get the sense, although Oregon State does have the lead right now, seven point lead, you get the sense though that this is a very critical drive for the Beavers because at the end of the day, as much success as Oregon State had in the first half, Arizona State's right there. And this is a football team that can be pesky. You don't want to let them be in the ball game in the second half with Trenton Borgain, especially if X Valade gets that run game going. Off play action. Treshawn Harrison, Oregon State's top receiver, changing directions. And he picks up 11 for another Beavers first down. Taylor? Sean Aguanu is saying that they have to be better at stopping the run on first down. He said, we're trying to bring pressure defensively, but our guys are getting dirty eyes and missing some assignments. And then he said, on offense, on third down, when they start to bring the pressure, we're making some wrong protection calls. So we have to clean that up. Brock, who does that fall on? All offensive line protection calls start with the center and with Arizona State having Ben Bray in there at center making his first career start. Once again, that's a difficult task, but he needs to lean on the guys that have been playing this season. He needs to lean on his quarterback, Trenton Porgue, to help him out if there is confusion out there, because at the end of the day, there's no excuses. You have to find a way to compete and win the football game. Meanwhile, an impressive start to the third quarter offensively. Three plays, three first downs. Yeah, and, and right now, Oregon State's comfortable. They're dictating the terms and tempo of this football game. And unless Arizona State finds a way on first and second down to get Oregon State out of the run game by winning the line of scrimmage, Oregon State's going to continue to do whatever they want on offense. Go Branson in a tight window completes. And the Beavers march into Arizona State territory. It's Harrison again. Damian Martinez 23 yards away from a fifth straight 100-yard game. Arizona State slow to get set, and Martinez moves the chain. So confusion defensively that time for the Sun Devils. Boy, if Martinez doesn't trip up on his own offensive lineman there, I think he takes that one to the house. And you're right, you're seeing some confusion on the Arizona State defense. Sean Aguano saying at halftime there's been dirty eyes. Well, what he means by that is Arizona State, the secondary and linebackers are not playing with good eye discipline right now. They're getting caught with their eyes in the backfield, which makes sense because of Oregon State's run game, but that's why those explosive of plays have happened in the passing game for the Beavers. Play action. Overman holding the block. Gold Branson using his legs. And he's to the 35, a gain of four. Taylor talked about that with Jonathan Smith. Uh, Gold Branson already a season high in rush yards today, moving in the pocket, running with the football more than we've seen him do. Certainly, and it's definitely not his strong suit, but you can see he has a really good feel for the pocket, and he understands when there is an opportunity to escape outside and get some yards. Now, on the flip side for Arizona State, you need to find a way to keep him in there, make him beat you with his arm, and also find a way to get pressure to create negative plays and get Oregon State out of rhythm. Martinez taken down by Joe Moore. Close to a first down, about three yards shy. It's third down 
And from here, given the kicking issues for Oregon State, this is four down territory. It certainly is. So you almost have to look at this as like it's second down right now. So if Oregon State comes out and runs the football, it makes total sense. So for Arizona State, they need to be more in a run stopping mindset, have great gap discipline and possibly bring an extra guy with pressure. Two tight ends to the left. Martinez strong side run and a first down for Oregon State. They telegraphed it, stacked the left side and Martinez fights his way through. Tell you what, Damian Martinez, he is a man on a mission. <laughs> the second half of this season going in search for his fifth straight 100 yard game, about 10 yards away from that right now. Be the first back in Oregon State history to do that since Steven Jackson. But for Arizona State, you have to find a way. And right now, those safeties, in my opinion, they're playing too deep. You need to get the safeties at linebacker level and sell out to stop the run and put the put the ball game in Ben Gobranson's hands. So that backs Oregon State up five yards. You brought this up in the first half. When you get the Beavers behind the chains, that's a chance for this defense now to dictate with pressure. Certainly it goes back to just getting out of rhythm. And what Oregon State's done a great job of since the first position of the first possession of this game is playing within rhythm. Penalties can definitely set you back and so can negative plays when the defense brings pressure. Go Branson lets it go. And incomplete for Bolden and a late flag with Ed Woods in coverage. I think that's a pretty questionable call. It looked like really good coverage there by Ed Woods. Getting his head, getting his head turned around as the ball's coming into the receiver. Little bit of hand contact you can see by Ed Woods right Pass before, right as the ball is Defense, approaching the receiver. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. It seemed, uh, it seemed a little ticky-tacky to me, but hey, I'm not down there on the field. The officials obviously had a better vantage point than I did. And the penalty gives Oregon State a first down in the red zone now. And we brought it up in the first half. The coaches say, Inside the 20, this is where Ben Goldbranson has really matured in his brief time as a starter. Overman, the tight end, motions. Martinez. You talk about the improvement of Goldbranson in the red zone, and you're right, that's where you can really judge a quarterback because in the red zone, you have to make quicker decisions. Things happen faster because the field's condensed. So when you see Ben Gobranson having more success in the red zone, cutting the football loose on time, you can definitely see that confidence growing as he plays more football throughout the season. Now, when he came in against Utah for an injured to Chance Nolan, he threw a couple of picks, took away some scoring opportunities down here. Martinez again. Machetes through the defense. Touchdown, Oregon State. And there's the 100 yard mark for Damian Martinez, fifth straight game. You can see on the touchdown run, his vision is just so good. He's pressing the whole front side. He finds the backside cutting lane. Hardly touched. Arizona State playing their safeties at depth. Great vision, great patience, and a terrific run by Damian Martinez to get his second touchdown of the day. In high school, Damian Martinez broke his right hand as a senior in his school's regular season finale. The coaches said, shut it down. He said, no way. Put a cast on it. He carried it in his left hand and scored seven touchdowns in the next two games. Five straight 100-yard rushing games for the true freshman from Louisville, Texas, Damian Martinez under-recruited. He's a diamond, an uncut gem 
that Oregon State found, and he's going to be one of the top backs in this league for the next few years. He certainly is. He's having a tremendous true freshman campaign up in Corvallis. When you're in the same conversation as Steven Jackson, you're doing something right. You're playing football at a high level. Damian Martinez has been a lot of fun to watch run this season. He's got a chance at 1,000 yards now on the season with a strong finish as Arizona State will bring it out to the 25-yard line. Statement Saturday continues on ESPN. Hendon Heisman Hooker leading number five Tennessee against South Carolina at 7 Eastern. Michigan rallied late for a win today. TCU rallied late for a win today. Tennessee at number five. Some of it will be out of the ball's control. They're going to rely on the eye test from the committee. They've got one of the best wins with the win against Alabama, the lone loss to Georgia, but no chance at an SEC championship. Borgay moves the pocket and finds Conyers in the flat for a short gain. So the tight end involvement in this receiving game and this passing game for Arizona State continues with Sean Iguano as the play caller. It certainly does, and that's something that Sean really wants to emphasize. He thinks he has a very special player in Jalen Conyers at the tight end position. You've definitely seen it over about the last month in his production and how it's jumped. I think that was a great decision by Sean Iguano to move the pocket there on first down to slow down Oregon State's pass rush. Uh, team high six catches for Conyers. Valade on the cutback. It's been an impressive performance for X Valade today. Eight carries, 82 yards. Arizona State north of 100 yards rushing against a team that had only given up a little more than 300 rush yards in the last five games. And Valade finding a small space through a warn of defenders out to the 45. Oladapo, the safety, able to bring him down. X Valade making the first two guys that bring contact, makes them miss. You can see why he's so special and why he's had such a great career between Wyoming and now his senior campaign here in Tempe. And he's closing in on 100 yards across midfield. And that's going to get him right to 100 on the nose with a gain of eight. Anytime Arizona State has had success today, or really even in the past couple weeks, it's all gone through X Valade. When X is playing well, it opens up things in the past game for Elijah Badger, Jalen Conyers. Borgay on the keeper, the zone read, tackled by Fisher Morris after a gain of three. You feel the rhythm change for the Sun Devils when X is getting positive yards from the running back position. And if you're not able to get him his touches carrying the ball, once again, he's a weapon in the pass game, and you need to find a way for him to touch the football as often as possible. We've seen that the last two games. He had 16 catches in those two entering today. Borgay keeps it again and slides down. They mark him down where he started the slide, so a little shy of the marker. Arizona State finding a little bit of rhythm on this drive, getting some success in the run game, moving the pocket, hitting the tight end on the rollout. Good drive for the Sun Devils. Borgay has a receiver wide open. It's Geo Sanders, former walk-on to former walk-on. There is a flag down. I think this might be a chop block inside by the Sun Devils. Cannot be engaged with the defensive lineman and cut him low at his knees. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense number 70 and 64. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeats second down. Bowley and Bray, and that is a drive killer. This was a drive that had a lot of momentum, a lot of positive plays. Now the penalty sets you way back. Yeah, penalties always hurt a drive, and a lot of times they're really hard to overcome. But once again, when you are engaged with a defensive lineman, you cannot cut him low. Really seemed like that one, it was definitely not intentional. Just kind of happened, bang, bang, those things happen. And got it goes wide, empty set. Borgay to the air, and able to complete 
out to the 45 yard line, a gain of six. It's Elijah Badger, his third catch. He's had a breakout season. Emerged as one of the top wideouts in the Pac-12. He's been the number one target. In fact, he's got twice as many receiving yards as any other Sun Devil. Badger, former four-star recruit out of Sacramento. Low snap. Borgay again underneath. And that's caught by Swinson for a gain of four. It'll bring up third down and long. Or rather, fourth down. So fourth down, about nine to go. And the offense staying out there. And you're probably asking yourself, why did Trenton throw to the check down there? Well, one of his strengths is his football IQ, and, and he understands how to sequence plays. He knew that this was going to be four down territory. He was just trying to find positive yards to make it more fourth and manageable. Here's the blitz. Borgay gets crushed, and it's incomplete. The safety, Oladapo. Like a heat-seeking no missile Brown into the backfield, and Borgay had to get rid of it quickly. Field. It's a turnover on downs. Oregon State takes over. Trent Bray bringing all-out pressure against the Sun Devils. Trent Borgay, Sean Aguano, no answer for the Beavers' pressure on fourth down. The college football playoff semifinals and the College Football Playoff National Championship on ESPN. Today, Arizona State celebrated the 40th anniversary of the 1982 team in January of 83. That team capped its season with a Fiesta Bowl win against Oklahoma. Darrell Rogers was the head coach. 66,000-plus in attendance in Tempe. Game MVP was Jim Jeffcoat. Talk about a Sun Devil legend. Went on to have an incredible NFL career. Great football player. Cole Branson finds Tyjon Lindsay. You talk about coming full circle. When Sean Aguano was coaching at Chandler High School in Arizona, Lindsay played against his team when Lindsey was at national powerhouse Bishop Gorman. Yeah, you talk about Sean Aguano and how great of a high school football coach he was. And his eight seasons as a head coach at Chandler High School led them to four state championships. Harrison tries to slip around. He gets no gain on the play. Edmonds right there. You got to go back to 2015. This was a nationally televised game. It was on ESPN. Bishop Gorman had Tate Martell. There's Lindsey with a 30 yard touchdown catch in that game. Bishop Gorman would knock off Chandler. And you get a look at Sean Aguano. We talked about it earlier. If he's the guy at Arizona State, and again, there's a lot of unknowns. He's somebody that has a lot of currency built up in this area with this fan base and in this community. Martinez tumbles out inside the 40. I think we need to go back to that game in Vegas, though. That wasn't the most exciting thing. You, you had a visitor, didn't you, up in the booth that might have grabbed the headset for a little bit of that game? Yeah, I did the game, and uh, Flavor Flav <laughs> was with us for two whole segments. How good is that? <laughs> The best part of that was our director had no idea who he was <laughs> and kept on telling me in my ear, who is this guy? Why are we putting him on? Get him off the air. Because it's great television. Big third down here. Cole Branson moving the pocket, using his legs again. And he picks up a first down. I'm not sure this was in the scouting report for Arizona State's defense. I'll tell you what, go Branson. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself. You're not going to see this kid win many track titles, but he knows how to utilize the athleticism that he does have. He keeps his eyes downfield. He's trying to throw the football, but if Arizona State's going to give him lanes, he's a good enough athlete. As we've seen today, he's going to pick up positive yards and keep those chains moving. Two tight ends. Martinez 
averaging more than seven a carry, and that is pure will out across to the 20-yard line on first down before Bethley able to subdue him. Taylor? No fl flavor flavor for you guys, unfortunately. But I do have an injury <laughs> update. Running back Jam Griffin just came out here in street clothes with a boot on his right ankle. I am told right ankle injury. He is out for the rest of the game. He was questionable coming into today's game with the shoulder injury. So remember, no Griffin and no Deshaun Fenwick. Two of the top three running backs on this team. Good thing Damian Martinez is having himself a day. Yeah, so expect to see Isaiah Newell. Expect to see Trey Lowe as well. Newell's in the game. Gold Branson again will run. And he slips right at the line of scrimmage. It was really cool what Gold Branson did there pre-snap. You see him pointing to his helmet before the snap. And what he's saying there, he's saying alert, alert, alert. Well, when he normally does that, they're changing the play from one run to a run the opposite direction. Well, there he was trying to sell to the defense that it was going to be a run. Instead, Oregon State goes reverse psychology, comes out with the play action pass. Arizona State does a great job of staying home. There's nowhere to go with the football. But I like the mind games. Go Branson's trying to play with the Arizona State defense. And it looks like we got a timeout before the flag. There is no foul for an illegal substitution. Oregon State has called their first charge time out of the half. We'll take I'm it as well. 2-10 to go in the third. The Beavers knocking on the door once again. Uh, one of the staples of the campus area here in Tempe, the Chuck Box. And Brock, tell us why it's such an advantage to be tall when you walk in there. It's outstanding because usually the line's going out the door. So by the time you finally get inside the door, you have to shout your order in line. There's no casual way to get your food at the Chuck Box. You shout your order, you pay with cash, great old school joint. In fact, I could use one of those burgers and some onion rings right now. Martinez slips the tackle into the end zone if it stands. Looks like Martinez is on a mission to go get a chuck box, too, trying to get through that end zone. <laughs> Personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense number 14, 15-yard penalty, repeat second down. They get John Dunmore, former Penn State Nittany Lion. Yeah, anytime you're coming back into the formation, unless you have your helmet across the defender's face so he can see you're coming, he can feel you're coming, it's going to be a legal blindside block every time. That's a huge penalty. That has now put Oregon State out of field goal range. Four-man rush, Gold Branson to the air, open receiver. And they get it back to about the 25-yard line, a gain of a dozen on the play. Silas Bolden with another catch. He's having a career day, getting the start in place of Anthony Gould, who's out with an injury. Great job of Ben Goldbranson there, taking what the defense gave him. They're sinking in a soft zone coverage. Take the completion, get your team back into field goal range, and third and manageable. Heads up play by Ben Goldbranson. Third down. Oregon State needs the 11-yard line. Goldbranson, the screen, Lindsey. Has the 20 and dives inside the 10. It's a first down. That's got to be a backbreaker for a defense. And now Lindsey is down. I love the play call by Brian Lindgren there player. for Oregon State. Arizona State's playing a cover two defense, two high safeties. They're sinking deep. And Ben understands that, so he's not going to put his quarterback in a situation where he could possibly turn the ball over, calls a screen, gets blockers out in front. You basically create a punt return, giving your ball carrier room and space to make a play. Heads up play call by Brian Lindgren. And heads up situational awareness by Lindsey, knowing where the marker was, diving to make sure he got it. Martinez up the gut. Nesta Jade Silvera, the former Miami Hurricane, making the stop. Second down, goal to go. Oregon State, 
12 touchdowns in its last 15 red zone possessions and two for two today. I think you're going to find out a lot about the Arizona State defense right here. This is a very critical drive down 21 seven Oregon State knocking on the door. Can you force a field goal here to keep your team in the ball game? Lindsay on the sideline. Cole Branson's got time. A lot of contact. It's incomplete. Harrison was the intended target. Roe Torrance, a terrific cover corner, was out there for Arizona State. So third and goal now from the eight. Great coverage there by Torrance. That play really never had a chance for Oregon State. Roe Torrance in great coverage. He's really done a tremendous job all season in man-to-man -man coverage. Yeah, there's a pigeon in the end zone. We might have a Randy Johnson ordeal here. Pigeon didn't move a whole lot. Third down. Quarterback run. Go Branson! Lunges in for six. Great job by center Jake Levengood leading the quarterback draw there. Getting his quarterback, Ben Gilbranson, in the end zone, who's shown, shown as he can use his legs today. Not only can he make good, smart decisions from the pocket, get his team into the right run play, but the kid can use his legs, too. Yeah, don't call him pigeon feet. Thirty-six rushing yards on nine carries for Ben Gilbranson, the quarterback. Fifteen out of eighteen through the air. He's thrown a touchdown pass. Close to 200 rushing yards on the afternoon for the Beavers. Just your standard quarterback draw, quarterback taking the ball, taking one step back, trying to sell pass, and then you get big number 70, Jake Levengood, the center, out in front, leading up on the middle linebacker, Kyle Soley, to spark Ben Gilbranson into the end zone. Great execution by the Oregon State Beaver offense. Now Oregon State banged up on the offensive line. Everybody has some nicks and cuts this time of the year. But that is the unit that provides the leadership offensively, and that's the unit that they lean on offensively. They don't really have a big 6'4 wide receiver. Musgrave, who was their best pass catcher at tight end, his, he's out for the year. They lean on the run game, and that run game is set up by the guys up front. It's certainly the identity of the Oregon State offense. And it starts with that front five, like you're saying. You got a couple big guys up there, 327 pounds, 326 pounds. Brandon Kipper at right guard making his 43rd consecutive start today. That offensive line for the Beavers is definitely the heart and soul of that offensive unit. Kickoff week 11 of your NFL Sunday with the countdown crew at 10 a.m. Matt Hasselbeck goes all access with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. It is Movember, plus Justin Jefferson and the game's great wideouts break down the art of the one-handed catch. In that game against Buffalo last week, Jefferson made some of the best catches you'll see. And then Monday Night Football, Christian McCaffrey of the 49ers taking on DeAndre Hopkins and the Cardinals from Mexico City. I'll tell you what, I was fortunate enough to play a Monday night football game down in Mexico City. What a cool atmosphere, what a cool venue. It's great that the NFL is going down there. Contested throw, broken up, intended for Conyers. Well, if you're Arizona State, it's go time. If you're going to hang in this ball game, you certainly have to find points on this drive. Touchdown's obviously much better than a field goal. You're in obvious passing situations, put your offensive line in a tough situation, but you got to chip those edges. You got to find a way to move the football down the field and get some points. Screen pass. Cam Johnson. It'll be third and five when the fourth quarter begins. Two touchdowns in that third quarter for Oregon State. Their lead has mushroomed to 21. Martinez, 126. Two scores on the ground. And then go Branson, sneaky with his feet on a Saturday afternoon in Tempe. You're watching the Pac-12 on ESPN.
Oregon State in full control, 28 to 7. They lead Arizona State. Third down and five for the Sun Devils at their own 30 yard line to begin this final quarter here in Tempe. Borgate of the air. Underneath, it's caught, but well shy of the marker. A pickup of four. Didn't quite get there. That was Valade with the catch. It's fourth down. And the offense still out there. Down by three scores. You're not going to a bowl game. Really, not a lot to lose here. No, this is definitely the right call if you're Sean Aguano. It's now or never for the Sun Devils. For them to stay in the ball game, they need to find a way to convert. Valade with a first down. He's been a bright spot today for Arizona State, north of 100 yards rushing. The Wyoming transfer has shown that he can play with anybody with the season that he's put together in the Pac-12. He certainly has. He's definitely in the, the top conversation for some of the best running backs in the Pac-12 conference. Tremendous season, over 1,000 yards. He's had great production in the pass game as well. Very solid in pass protection. Certainly a tremendous all-around running back for the Sun Devils. Seventh 100-yard game as a Sun Devil. Badger on the tunnel screen. Broke the first tackle. Pinballs off another. And then swarmed for a loss of a yard. The Beavers tackle incredibly well in space. We've seen that all afternoon. They certainly do, and they hustle, right? You, you just saw a big defensive lineman, 300 pounds, running 30 yards sideways across the field to make that tackle. And I think that's a credit to Jonathan Smith and then the defensive coordinator, Trent Bray, with the culture they've created in Corvallis. You definitely see this defense play as a team, play as a unit. Valade. Not much, a yard maybe, third down. Omar Spates, the leading tackler for Oregon State there. Arizona State playing with an offensive line, some backups in there, shuffled that group throughout the season. You can tell they're certainly worried about the Oregon State pass rush and pressure, leaning heavily on the run game and the quick game, but at some point, Going to have to take some shots down the field to try to create a spark and get some points on the board. And got to in at running back. Cam Johnson, the motion man. Borgay's got time. Pressure from the backside. Borgay runs out of bounds. Maybe a yard on the play. It's fourth down. Just nothing there downfield. Oregon State's defense did a great job covering up all the receivers and tight ends. There's nowhere to go with the football for Trenton Bourget. And on fourth down and eight, Eddie Chaplitsky and the punt team will come on. Josiah Irish, fifth year senior from Snoqualmie, Washington, waits inside the 10. Irish from the 13. Crosses the 20 and out of bounds near the 25. A 12 yard return on a 47 yard punt. Timeout on the field. 12.06 to go in regulation. Oregon State looking for its eighth win of the season. Kevin Connors in studio, second screen viewing mandatory here in week 12. Ohio State has just kicked the field goal to take a 10 6 lead on Maryland over on ABC. DJ Uyangle, two TD passes and a touchdown run. Clemson pounding Maryland 21-0 on ESPN. And Cincinnati very much alive in the American Championship game mix. They've got a touchdown pass from Ben Bryant, leading Temple on ESPNU and Ish. Here it's 28-7. Oregon State with the football and the lead. Ben Branson chased and throws it away. And we are monitoring a developing situation. Taylor There's McGregor. No tension of grounding. Do you have an update? In the area receiver of the pass. downfield, in case you missed the pigeon in the end south end zone right here. He has not moved in the last five minutes. He's done a lot of eating. He really loves the flavor of this grass. So, Brock, if you know anything about what's in this grass here, apparently the pigeons flock. Tried to get rid of him at halftime, didn't work. <laughs> I tell you what, though. He definitely has a good good deal. I'm sure there's some good worms down there, some good seed. The grounds crew here at Arizona State, tremendous team. They've done Super Bowls for the last 20 plus years. 
It's definitely some good stuff down there for that pigeon. The pigeon almost got run over earlier. And Brock, I know you played quarterback. Being unflappable <laughs> is a great quality to have for a quarterback. But when you have wings, probably not so much. I tell you what, that pigeon's a happy guy. Oregon State's going the other direction with the ball. He's having a good little lunch out there in that end zone. Martinez gets the call again. He'll be short of the marker, fourth down. I'm getting worried about him. I'm I not hope he's worried. okay. Do we have an injury report, Taylor? Is he okay? Well, I Can tried, he fly? I tried to scare him, and he just is paying no attention to anybody. I think he's just enjoying an afternoon snack. I don't think there's any need to be concerned, because if it was me and I could eat all day, I think I would be a happy camper. Listen, that pigeon's focused. He knows what he's doing. I, I know when I'm hungry, I want a meal, and I'm going to drown everything else out. Looks like that's what our friend's doing down there in that south end zone. Good for him. Someone should have a meal right now. Randy Johnson no longer lives in the area, correct? You know, I think Randy still might be in town. Oh, well, that's trouble for the pigeon. Good punt. This one is muffed. And Oregon State recovers. It's been that kind of day for Sun Devil Nation. Skyler Thomas recovers the punt. Correction. And the Beavers will take over in prime field position. DJ Taylor retreated and probably should have let that go over his head. As soon as he touches it, it's a muff punt. Well, if you're an Oregon State fan, you definitely have a big smile on your face today. From the first possession of the game, you've really controlled things. You haven't really been threatened. And you've really dictated the terms of this football game. Damian Martinez closing in on 140 yards on the ground. Two touchdowns today. Got it started in the first quarter. Scored another one in the third. Brock, sometimes third downs are a telling stat. The telling stat about third down in this game is Oregon State has only had seven all game. Well, it goes back to what I said in the, the first half. And, and, you know, when I was playing football with Peyton Manning, he used to say all the time, hey, we don't have to get to third down. We're allowed to do first down, second down, and then get a first down on second down and just avoid the third down defense when defenses start disguising things and getting more aggressive with pressures. Oregon State's done a tremendous job of that today, and it's really been because of the run game. They're having so much success running the football on first down They've been in second and short the majority of the game, and they're able to pick it up, whether that be with Martinez on the ground or Bill Branson with his arm through the air. When they can run the ball like this and not turn it over, they are incredibly difficult to beat. Certainly, because once again, it goes back to it. You are dictating the terms of how the game is going to play out if you can run the football, protect the football, and control the time of possession. Pass batted down, incomplete fourth down. It's demoralizing to a team. It's demoralizing to a defense when your offensive opponent just runs the football for first down after first down and is able to just lean their weight on you and impose their will. Officials timeout. Everett Hayes on for a field goal try and good stop there by the Arizona State defense. Anthony Cooper came off the field limping. Hayes is only three for eight on the season. This from 26. He missed earlier from 44. And this one is good. Oregon State extending to a 31 to seven lead after the kick by Hayes. 9.38 to go in regulation. ESPN College Football is presented by Sonos. Experience game-changing sound made easy. Some greats who have come through Tempe. Haynes, Allen, Woodson, Suggs. And the man standing next to me that I look up to. <laughs> literally, <laughs> six foot eight Brock Osweiler. Homecoming weekend. And homecoming for Brock, your first season as an ESPN analyst. Hope you've been enjoying yourself all these weeks 
cross country travel. I see how you got to get on those flights. You got to arch your back a little bit. Yeah, that plan we had coming out of Waco, Texas earlier this year after the <laughs> Baylor game. That, things got a little dicey on that one. That wasn't the biggest bird we've ever been on. But I tell you what, it's been a ton of fun. Thank you for making my job so easy throughout the season. I just have to follow you, which is great. It's been a lot of fun hopping into this. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun working with you, and I'm glad you get to come home, stay home, sleep in your own bed, wake up in your own bed. We take a look at the Taco Bell Live Ma student section. Student sections across the country are competing to be the Live Ma student section of the year all season long. I like the energy. Student section not going away just yet. Well, Sparky's into it. Nine and a half to go, fourth quarter. Empty set for the Sun Devils. And that one thrown behind Andre Johnson. This is do or die time for Arizona State. Things not looking good. Down 31-7. Clock's ticking in the fourth quarter. Going to have to find a way to get a quick touchdown. And a lot of things to bounce their way if they're going to stay in this one. Delayed pressure. And Valaday makes the catch. Meanwhile, the pigeon is still camped out in the south end zone. And I guess the carrot at the end of the stick for Arizona State. If you can rattle the pigeon a few times, that means you're doing something offensively. <laughs> it does. It means you're in the end zone scoring points. But that's not going to be easy. Trent Bray, defense coordinator, Oregon State, really has his defense playing great ball right now. They're really suffocating that Arizona State pass game. Not easy to move the ball right now for the Sun Devils. Pressure coming and nearly intercepted. Ryan Cooper broke that up. Diving attempt. Cooper, the injured Alex Austin, and Rajon Wright all rank in the top three in the league in passes defended. Yeah, and you can see why. They, they blanket wide receivers. There's nowhere to throw the football against this Oregon State defense. They're really having a great season. Second best total defense in the Pac-12 statistically. Number one in stopping the run. But you can see Trent Bray definitely has his defensive unit playing great football at a high level. They're flying around. They're having some fun. And they're making the job for an offense very difficult right now. Irish, room to run. And brings it across the 35, a 56-yard kick by Eddie Chaplitsky. 8.39 left in this one. Oregon State trying to put the ribbon and wrapping paper on the Sun Devils. Let's check out who's making the connection. Brought to you by Sintas. It's been all Damian Martinez today. That Oregon State ground game has been going from the first play of the game and hasn't stopped. Damian Martinez with 137 yards and two touchdowns, making guys miss, lowering his shoulder, great vision, great one cut, get vertical. He's really put on a clinic from the running back position today for the Beavers. Newell gets the call on first down for a gain of a couple. Martinez 137 on the ground averaging six and a half per he's got the two rushing touchdowns he's extended his 100 yard streak to five straight I'll tell you what he's put on a performance today it's been a lot of fun behind that big offensive line led by Brandon Kipper at right guard making his 43rd consecutive start I'll tell you what that offensive line and run game for the Beavers has been mightily impressive They keep it on the ground, legs churning, and out to the 45-yard line, a pickup of six. And here's really the most impressive thing about the Oregon State run game. You talked to Arizona State coaches yesterday, you talked to people around the program. Everyone knew Oregon State was going to come in and try to establish the run. And when you know that a team's going to run the football and you still can't stop them, that just shows the quality of guys Oregon State has on their offensive line and at the running back position. And Oregon State today has done it without some key pieces. No Deshaun Fenwick. Jam Griffin left the game with an injury. Jack Coletto, who we were excited to see, he's out today with an injury. Yeah, talk about a football player. Jack Coletto reminds me a lot of Taysom Hill with the New Orleans Saints. Big hit. 
play some linebacker, play some fullback, play some wildcat quarterback, play special teams. He can do it all. Reminds me a lot of Taysom. A lot, a lot of fun to watch on tape this week. And like you said, I was really looking forward to watching him perform out here as well, but caught the injury bug. It's Oregon State. That was Micaiah Tung with the reception. Tristan Jebbia is the quarterback for Oregon State. Jebbia was the starter in 2020, tore his hamstring against Oregon, didn't play last year. A week ago, he saw his first meaningful action since 2020. You can, Taylor? You can imagine this Oregon State offense is feeling pretty confident on the sideline. O-line coach Jim Mahalchek went up to his O-line after the last series and said, well, I don't have anything for you. You guys are doing exactly what we practice. Nothing out of the ordinary from Arizona State. So it looks like they're going to take these last several minutes, try to hold on to the score, and then look ahead to Oregon next week. Big game for them. This was a blueprint game for Oregon State. They followed their blueprint. Yeah, and talk about a player's dream. When your coach looks at you and goes, hey, I got nothing for you. Just keep doing more of what you're doing. That's outstanding. And, and, and he's right. Oregon State, from the first play of this game, they've played great offensive football. A couple penalties, but they overcame them. The offensive line's really been in control. Bolden. A short pickup, a gain of two. No turnovers. Only three penalties for Oregon State. You know, you talk about why Oregon State is having the success that they're having, and part of that is the discipline that they bring week in and week out. When you only have three penalties on the road, you know, that's a tribute to the coaching staff, the things that they preach throughout the week, and then the players hearing the coaches' messages, doing things the right way, playing with great technique. I'll tell you what, Oregon State might not be the most flashy team offensively, but they know how to produce points. They know how to produce yards. And then defensively, what Trent Bray has going in his third down package, I'll tell you what, the Beavers are not a team that you want to see right now late in the year. Here's the blitz. Jebbia completes the pass, shy of the marker. Fourth down. What Oregon State has, Brock, is an identity. They know who they are. And when you look at their three losses, all the quality teams, all the teams that have been ranked at one point, the Utah and USC game in particular, they turned the ball over. Their style of play doesn't allow them to overcome multiple turnovers. If they run the ball, if they eat up clock, and if they don't give it up, they're very hard to beat. The Washington game, they had a chance to win that. No turnovers in that game. They just got maybe too conservative in their words in the second half. You're spot on, and they missed a pass player too. And like you said, they, they went for it on fourth down a couple times down in the red zone rather than kicking field goals. How about that? But when you go through their schedule and you look at it, you know, they lost to USC at home by three. There was four interceptions in that ball game. And then you're talking about the Washington game losing by three. You know, Oregon State's a couple plays away from only having one loss on the year. So that goes back to what Jonathan Smith has brought back to Corvallis. It's the winning ways. It's a tough, gritty football team. They're willing to outwork their opponent. They play disciplined football. They play smart football. And you can tell everyone in this program is bought into what Jonathan Smith wants to do. And they hit a play on fourth down. It moves the chains. It extends the drive. 3.35 to go here in the fourth quarter. On the ground, Kanoa Shannon from Kamehameha High School in Hawaii. And he gets to the 11-yard line, a pickup of eight. Taylor? Genuine was the word that I kept hearing about Jonathan Smith when I was asking players about him this week. They said, look, this is a guy who loves Oregon State. Everything about him just feels so genuine. So Easton Mascarenas was one of the first four-star recruits that Smith was able to get to Oregon State under his tenure. And he just said, I immediately bought into the family-type atmosphere. So I think there is something to the fact that he played at Oregon State and he can sell exactly what he went through. And let's not forget, Jonathan Smith is not the only X player on staff. Your defensive coordinator played linebacker at Time Oregon out. State. Your Oregon special State, teams coordinator charge. was a team captain on the 2001 Fiesta Bowl team. So he brought back the right guys that truly love and care about that program, and you can see it translate to the field. And guys that know what it takes to win in Corvallis, this is a program that is reemerging on the national radar.
Michigan and TCU survived. Ohio State is trailing, Acho, thanks to C.J. Dupree. Goal line formation. You think it's going to be a run? C.J. Dupree, the 6'5", 245-pound tight end, sneaks out the back. Touchdown. Number two is down by a field goal at Ace over on ABC. Now I'm telling you, these teams in the playoff Polaroid have had a tough time today. Michigan barely won. TCU squeaked it out. Ohio State on the ropes. This is ESPN College Football presented by Sonos. Isaiah Newell right side bumped out before he can get there. Newell just following the lead. Has a pulling guard out in front of him. Letting the big man do all the dirty work. Great patience following his lead blocker. Jebbia taking a long look toward the sideline. His high school coach was former Tennessee QB Casey Clawson. Jebbia began his career at Nebraska. Sixth year from Calabasas, California. That's Kardashian country, right? <laughs> so I'm told. I don't catch a lot of episodes of the Kardashians. <laughs> Timeout. Oregon State, their third and final of the half. And we get a timeout so with two timeout. three to go in the play clock winding down. This was Arizona State homecoming, and we told you, Jonathan Smith, the Oregon State head coach, when he comes to Tempe, in this stadium in particular, it brings up fond memories. He was the quarterback on the 2000 Oregon State team, greatest team in school history. They end that season on New Year's Day 2001 in the Fiesta Bowl, demolishing Notre Dame. Chad Johnson, T.J. Hoosman's out of the wide receivers that Smith threw to. Smith was the game MVP, three touchdown passes, 41-9 to the final to put the capper on an 11-1 season. Oregon State won 10 games under Mike Riley, and if they win out, they've got a chance to win 10 games for the third time in the history of the program. Newell stood up. I think the best part about that is when we talk to Jonathan Smith, hey, you know, what memories did you have in Sun Devil Stadium? Tell us about that football game. It was outstanding. He just started talking about all the throws that he missed in that football game. He goes, gosh, we could have scored even more points. And that's just so true to a quarterback's mindset. Very rarely do you remember your wins, your big throws down the field, things like that. You always remember the throws you wish you would have connected on. He also said he sees a lot of similarities with this team in terms of roster construction and that 2000 team. Junior college guys, walk-ons, boulder on your shoulder types, and a competitive spirit that permeates through the program. Toss left. Edge is sealed up. A lot of contact, and Newell bumped out. Third and goal. Jonathan Smith is so smart with how he constructed this team. He's really taking the Dennis Erickson Officials blueprint for an that Dennis player. brought to Corvallis in the late 90s that led to that 2001 Fiesta Bowl season and the 11 wins. Corvallis is not an easy place to recruit to. It's not easy to build a winning program in Corvallis. So Jonathan Smith taking that Dennis Erickson blueprint and running with it now and doing a tremendous job. There's an injured Beaver down at the two-yard line. 111 to go. Fourth quarter, 31 to 7. Oregon State on its way to 8 and 3. And the rivalry game coming next week against Oregon. My shock collar goes off if I call the rivalry what it's been called for many years. Can't say it anymore. <laughs> A lot of rules in 2022. Now take another look. Malik Kelly, 86, non-contact. Looks like his leg got extended out. You know, at this point, if you're Oregon State, you're just trying to get out of the stadium, no more injuries. You know, you've had the flu bug run through your team. You've had injuries go through your team. Like you talk about with that matchup coming up next week, last thing Oregon State wants to see is anyone else go down for them. In that game, Oregon 
playing for a spot in the Pac-12 championship potentially. USC right now the best hope for the league for the college football playoff but a lot of worried Oregon State players right now as they tend to Kelly. We'll step aside and check in with Kevin in the studio. And Anish, we want to let you know we've got Georgia Tech and North Carolina here in the on-deck circle. And Acho, a golden opportunity for Drake May to seize control, maybe, of the Heisman Trophy. Drake May's accounted for 39 total touchdowns, 34 passing touchdowns. Redshirt freshman has been playing outstanding all season long. Blake Corum was banged up in the Michigan win today. C.J. Stroud has a touchdown pass but has not been great. For Ohio State against Maryland today, and Drake May tied for the FBS lead in TD strikes. The Tar Heels will take on the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech after we go final in Tempe. Kelly being helped off, and yeah, I hope he can be okay. Freshman out of Portland, Oregon. Georgia Tech, North Carolina is the game that follows ours. And North Carolina's a one-loss team, probably not getting into the college football playoff, but Drake May deserves to have a seat in New York City for the Heisman Trophy presentation. I tell you what, UNC still has a lot to play for. You win out, you win your conference championship. Who knows what happens up there with those top four teams. Definitely still playing for a lot, but then you talk about Drake May, and I tell you what, this redshirt freshman, He's a lot of fun to watch from from the first game this season. This kid came out slinging the football, running the football, scoring points, scoring touchdowns left and right. He's been he's been a lot of fun to watch this season. Mac Brown said all offseason, even despite losing Sam Howell to the NFL, we're going to be OK at quarterback. They're more than OK. Yeah, he saw on scout team last season what he had. He knew what he had in the hopper and Drake May is certainly making the most of his first opportunity as the starting signal caller in Chapel Hill. Fourth down coming up as Shannon gets the call. All right, Brock, the question for Arizona State moving forward. What do they want in their next head coach? Whether it's Sean Aguano, whether it's somebody else from the outside, you know this program better than anybody. I just think in general, if you're looking at the Arizona State job, you say, well, who does it fit? Well, certainly it's going to have to be someone that has West Coast roots, Arizona roots because you need to know the ins and outs the difficulties of recruiting the West Coast the Los Angeles area the Phoenix area so you need to have that base kick hits the upright you also talk about Oregon State and what they've done so great and I think Arizona State needs the same thing they need to create an identity they need to create a culture that you know when you turn on an Arizona State game you know what you're getting in that football team what impact does the specter of NCAA sanctions have. I would imagine that would play a big deal because if you're a coach looking at this job or even a top recruit looking at this job to come here and play, you're saying, well, what is the NCAA violations going to be? Are you going to revoke scholarships, which makes recruiting even harder? Are you going to put bowl bans out there? Now players are saying, well, if I can't play in a bowl game, I don't know if I want to come to school in Tempe. And you really saw that this last season, prior to this season kicking off, 17 players, primarily starters for the Sun Devils, hit the transfer portal. And guys who have gone elsewhere and have been big time players, look at Jaden Daniels, to top the list off at LSU. Yeah, and you have Eric Gentry at USC having an All-American season at linebacker. You got Johnny Wilson at Florida State leading the charge at the wide receiver unit there. You had a transfer into Florida. So you really did lose a lot of guys if you're the Arizona State Sun Devils. And until those NCAA sanctions are set and you know what the violations are, it is going to be very difficult to recruit here to Tempe. Homecoming in Tempe belongs to Oregon State today. Jonathan Smith and his team get their eighth win of the season. It's been one of the best stories in college football. The resurgence of Beaver football. Jonathan Smith in year five has this thing trending up. It's a top 25 team and a chance to get to nine wins and potentially 10 if they win out. Final score from Sun Devil Stadium. Oregon State 31, Arizona State 7. With the win today, the Beavers get their eighth win, something they haven't done in a decade. Down to Taylor.
Coach, so many injuries to key players here today. What did your team show you in this big time win? Yeah, you know, just proud of the guys that it's the next man up mentality. I think we got some depth. Guys that hadn't been playing that much, but been working hard in practice, got the opportunity to show up and play, and these guys played well. Ben Branson, as you guys try to finish out this season and make something special, how important are those legs going to be in the next coming weeks? Well, that was huge tonight. You know, the way the ability to exp uh, you know, expand the play, kept his eyes down the field. We need the quarterback to continue to play better and better, and Ben's been doing it. Big rivalry game next week. What did your team show you today that you needed to see to feel prepared going into next week? Well, taking care of business. Coming down here, playing a good football team, and, and having a business-like approach, not getting too far ahead of ourselves, and we did that today. Good memories in Phoenix yet again. Yeah, no question. No question. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Anish? Smiles for Jonathan Smith. Smiles for Oregon State. They leave Tempe with a W. They get Oregon next week. Arizona State finishes the season against Arizona for the Territorial Cup. We get a chance to see a potential Heisman Trophy winner next. It's Drake Bay, North Carolina taking on Georgia Tech, but before that, let's get you caught up on the day in college football. Back to Bristol, Sam Acho and Kevin Connor.